like we're making a difference in, in people's lives by better understanding. new science, I think it can hopefully change the world. It's cures for different types of cancers. Understanding of the process of protein folding. That's chemistry. That's a chemical reaction. I can help show. Chad Merkin, Northwestern University, uh, International Institute for Nanotechnology and Department of Chemistry. Uh, the ACS Award for Creative Invention recognizes my work on the development of uh, medical diagnostic tools uh, based upon tiny gold particles, nanoparticles, that are used as labels to create very high sensitivity and high selectivity medical diagnostic tools. Ways of tracking disease at much earlier stages, ways of treating disease at much earlier stages because of that ability to track. All of my research focuses on one central theme, and that is the development of, of chemical and surface analytical tools for controlling the architecture of molecules and materials on the 1 to 100 nanometer length scale. So what sort of scale are we talking about here? Take a dime uh, and slice it a thousand times in this direction. When you do that, you have a structure that's one micrometer thick. That's enormous compared to the scale that we're talking about. In fact, it's a thousand times larger. Take one of those slices and slice it another thousand times. Now you have a structure that's one nanometer thick. So the, the interesting chemical discovery here that led to all of these inventions is that if you take a nanoparticle made of gold and you synthesize DNA strands that have groups that can be tacked onto the surface of the particle, you can arrange DNA into a new format, into a spherical form and we call those spherical nucleic acids. So think of a shell of DNA on the surface of a tiny little particle. We've seen just explosive growth in the interest of these types of particles. Some of the early discoveries involving medical diagnostics have already gone through the transition from university-based discovery to technology that's now FDA cleared in part of a system called the Veragene system sold by a company that we started called Nanosphere and now used in hospitals all over the world. And the reason is these very simple and very sensitive diagnostic tests enabled by these spherical nucleic acid architectures allow you to do detection rapidly and at the point of care. And so we can think about decentralizing the medical diagnostics industry and moving a lot of the technologies that are at remote labs closer to the point of use, for example, in hospitals, in the emergency room, and ultimately one day in the doctor's office. Uh, and it turns out when you arrange DNA in this format, you get an interesting property where these types of structures will go through cells, human cells in fact, enter them freely, whereas linear DNA won't. Why is that important? Well, once you can get these types of structures inside cells, you now can begin to flip genetic switches and begin to regulate things called gene expression and that allows you to take, for example, a disease cell and correct what makes it a disease cell. So in the case of a cancer cell, you can flip genetic switches that cause those cells to selectively die. In the case of other cells, you can up and down regulate the expression of certain types of proteins to take them from the unhealthy state into the healthy state. Let me give you an example. Uh, brain cancer is one. And one of the things we've discovered is in animals, uh, these particles not only have the ability to penetrate tissue very deeply, including brain, but they can be delivered systemically and they will cross the blood-brain barrier. What it means is that we not only can go after new types of therapeutics for that disease, but we can begin to think about using these types of constructs to deliver lots of different types of therapeutics to the brain for things like Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, and many neurodegenerative disorders. And the other thing that we've invented with a lot of these nanoparticle-based detection uh, schemes and, and also the spherical nucleic acid architectures are high-sensitivity protein-based assays. And these allow you then to begin to look at markers for disease uh, at much earlier time points. It gives you a different radar to figure out when disease starts, what its progression is, and ultimately how you validate therapeutics associated with new types of diseases or diseases where we don't have therapeutics. So PSA is, is an interesting marker used for routine screening for prostate cancer. Every man above the age of 40 will likely have a PSA test in the developed world. So if a man has prostate cancer and has a prostatectomy, if he goes in and gets tested for PSA, he'll register as a zero. Well, it turns out he's not a zero. He's below what's detectable with the conventional diagnostic tools. With these new tools, 
we can track PSA post-prostatectomy and begin to stratify the patient population. By being able to go to very, very low levels and measure low levels of the marker, we can tell the patient years earlier that they're going through recurrence. The bad news is that there are no known therapeutics yet for treating this. So I always like to say that the, the first step towards a viable new therapeutic is a good diagnostic, and these are outstanding diagnostic tools. I, I believe that uh, not just one, but many of our technologies will lead to uh, very viable treatments for many forms of cancer, and hopefully, in certain cases, cures for different types of cancers. And I think what we're seeing is a whole new platform emerging that is going to provide a route to really enabling nucleic acid-based therapeutics in a way that we dreamed about uh, a decade ago, uh, but are just beginning to realize today.